So that's a really key point I wanted to ask you about. You think they could be probably mildly infectious. Are there a risk to their unvaccinated children and other family members who haven't been able to take vaccines? I think that is part of the concern because, of course, children under 12 at the present time are not getting the opportunity to be vaccinated. And uh, of course, people who are immunocompromised perhaps have had an organ transplant or who are on chemotherapy for cancer may have been vaccinated but not generated an effective immune response. So those folks are all in a somewhat more vulnerable place. But I do want people, though, to recognize that this notion of breakthrough invest in infections is actually quite uncommon. It is one of the reasons why in a high-risk situation like Los Angeles right now, they're recommending, once again, people put on masks when they're indoors, including the vaccinated people, just for the ultimate safety concerns. I know people are tired of masks, but it's not so awful to consider having to put a cloth mask on your face when you're inside if it's going to potentially stop what is right now looking like a pretty significant surge of infections, especially in places where vaccination rates are low. Well, I think uh, former Surgeon General Jerome Adams just tweeted that he worried that the CDC had been too relaxed about um, mask guidance again, that he thought there might be a you know, harf harmful return. Do you think that's true? Should we be masking up and should this be up to local governments or should there be some more nationwide guidance on the importance of masking? Well, this is a chronic challenge, isn't it, Francis? Because <laughs> there are all of these different situations and circumstances across our very heterogeneous country. And for CDC to try to come up with a recommendation that applies everywhere is just simply not possible. When they made their recommendation about being safe to take masks off if you're fully vaccinated, including indoors, that was before the Delta variant began to appear and before we realized how much of a hesitancy problem was going to exist in some parts of the country so that we might start to see a surge again. And now here we are starting to see it. But I think the local officials by now, having gone through this for a year and a half, are in a pretty good position to decide when you hit that threshold where you're going to say, hey, you know, in my community, we probably need to go one more step here and ask people to mask when they're indoors. So you're a data person. Are we gathering enough data about these mild infections um, to know when we should be making these decisions which have such an impact on, on the general public? It's a good question. We are gathering data and of course it's complicated to do so. I wish we had data on every single breakthrough, even if it's a very mild illness and also the ability in my perfect world as a researcher where you could actually sample uh, what is the viral load that they have in, in their nose and is that likely to be infectious to other people around them. We don't know much about that. CDC, given their limited resources, have basically decided they're not going to do much to pursue breakthroughs unless they're seriously ill. And then they're going to look at those because those are ones where you worry, oh, is this a variant that's even worse than Delta that has somehow evaded the vaccine protection and even made somebody very sick? And we do need to know that. Fortunately, we have not seen much evidence of that in this country. But it's all a matter of resources, and in a perfect world, I wish we had more information.